All right, here's a situation where three forces are completely canceling on a box. And it's not the easiest thing to figure out what the missing force is because all of these are pulling in different directions. And so the only real way to do this is to break them down into their components. So in other words, F1 is pulling at this angle of 30 degrees. So what I need to figure out is how much is it pulling in the X direction and how much is it pulling in the Y direction. So I say, okay, this is 120 and this is 30 degrees. What is the x component and what is the y component? So the sine of 30 degrees equals opposite y over hypotenuse 120 and the cosine of 30 degrees equals x the adjacent over 120. And if you need a review on how to do this, uh, go back and watch v1. So I'm going to solve for x and y and those are my components for f1. So x and y for F1. So 120 times sine 30, that is 60 for Y, and 120 times cosine 30, I get 103.9. And I just want to double check my signs. F1 is up and to the right, so both of these should be positive, so that's fine. So now I'm on to F2, so I'm going to draw that. So this is 70 degrees here. And this is my y, and this is my x. All right, so sine of 70 degrees equals my opposite, again, in this case happens to be y, over this force was 150, so that's the hypotenuse over 150. And the cosine of 70 degrees is the x over 150 in this situation. So now I can break down F2's components F2 and the x in the y direction, I'm going to solve for those. So 150 sine 70 is the y, which is 140.95. However, this one's pulling in the downward direction, so it's negative 140.95. And then 150 cosine 70 is 51.3, and it's pulling to the right, so that's fine. So these are the components of F2. Notice that the Y is much larger because it's such a steep angle. There's clearly a bigger Y component than there is an X component. So now I want to find out what F3 is. And what I know so far is that F2 has these components and F1 has these components. So F3 must have components that exactly cancel these two. So the best way to figure that out is to say, okay, well, what is F1 plus F2 together. What are their components? They're the X and Y of X, F1 and F2. So F1 and F2, the X is this 51.3 plus the 103.9. So I'm going to add 103.9 plus 51.3. So together, they have an X component of 155.2. And then their Y components are this negative 140.95 and the 60. So I'm going to add those together, negative 140.95 plus 60. So together their y components are negative 80.95. And looking at these two together, it looks like that. They are pulling down more than up. So it looks makes sense that it's a negative y. And clearly it's a positive x because they're both pulling to the right. So if that's f1 plus f2, what does F3 have to be to cancel that? It's going to have to be the exact opposite. So its X is going to have to be negative 155.2, and its Y is going to have to be positive 80.95. Those are the components of F3. And if I want, I can draw these in, so that means the Y here is 80.95 on this length, and that this length here is 155.2. So finding the value F3 is just basically using the Pythagorean theorem. I'm not going to write that out here. I'm just going to kind of assume that you can do that, but I will give you the answer. So when I use the Pythagorean theorem, I can find that the force, F3, the total magnitude is about 1554 newtons. That is the value of F3. Now let's say I want to find this angle. So I have a triangle that I've created, and I know that the Y component is 80.95, and the x component is 155.2, and I want to find this angle. So the tangent of this angle equals the opposite, 80.95, over the adjacent, 155.2. So if I divide those, 80.95 divided by 155.2, I have the tan of theta 
equals 0.52. So I want to find the angle whose tangent is 0.52. So uh, I did this in v-1. I'm going to take the inverse tan of each side, um, that operation. So tan inverse of each side. So that means tan inverse of tan theta is theta. So I get theta equals the tan inverse of 0.52. And again, this is an operation on your calculator. Uh, it's on the same button as tangent. So if I take the tan inverse of 0.52, I get 27, I'm gonna round 0.5 degrees. So I'm gonna write that up here next to my force. And that seems reasonable, 27.5 degrees. It's less than 45, which makes sense because the y is smaller than the x. Um, so that makes sense. So that is the angle, and that is the force needed to cancel this out. So there's not a lot of space here. It's pretty crowded. But if you have enough space on your paper, um, and you're keeping careful track of your components, um, these all these problems are almost exactly the same. So you've seen one. You've kind of seen them all. Um, so try these out and uh, see how you do. All right. So until next time, I am Derek Genova. Have a delightful day.